Hey guys! I'm Corey. And I'm Jess. And this is V is for Vegans. Now, you may have noticed today's episode is going to be a little bit different. Yes. Okay? This video is not a recipe video, but it is a video on our top five favorite vegan documentaries. So although this is something completely different that we normally do on our channel, we believe that this is the most important video that we've made so far. Mm -hmm. And we are so thrilled that we finally get to make it because at the end of the day, this is why we created our channel, mm -hmm. to help animals, people, and the planet. So thank you guys so much for watching and let's jump right into it. All right, at top five. Our top five is What the Health, executive produced by Joaquin Phoenix, directed by Kip Anderson and Keegan Kahn, 2017. Yes, awesome people. So we're gonna go in with a quick summary and then Jess is gonna read you guys some facts from the documentaries, okay? So it's a groundbreaking follow-up film from the creators of the award-winning documentary, Cowspiracy. The film follows filmmakers Kip Anderson as he uncovers the secret to preventing and even reversing chronic illnesses. He investigates why the nation's leading health organizations don't want us to know about it, with heart disease and cancer being the leading cause of death in America and diabetes at an all-time high. The film reveals possibly the largest health cover-up of our time. With the help of medical doctors, researchers, and consumer advocates, What the Health exposes the collusion and corruption in government and big businesses that is costing us trillions of healthcare dollars and keeping us sick. So the agenda and the strategy of the meat, dairy, and egg industry is to confuse the public, to introduce doubt. And this is something that is not unlike the tobacco industry. They used to use propaganda in all of their commercials. And of course, today we know that tobacco is not good for you. But back in the day, that was not the case. Mm. So to, in today's world, that's how animal agriculture is seen, and that is how consumption of animals is seen to be healthy and to be fine in the future that will not be the case so worldwide approximately 350 million people have diabetes guys 350 million one serving of processed meat per day increases risk of developing diabetes by 51 percent that is more than half that is unbelievable guys wow. Low fat plant based is more than twice as powerful at controlling and or preventing diabetes than the ADA, which is the American Diabetes Associate diet, recommends meat and dairy. So they on their website list meat and dairy as things that we should be consuming at all times in order to reverse diabetes. That is not the case whatsoever because these things are the leading cause of diabetes. They just don't want anyone to know. So it's pretty crazy once you actually start to research this stuff and really get into it, guys. In the US, one out of every four deaths is from cancer alone. And we all know or have known or will know someone with cancer at some point in our lives. It's inevitable. It's true. As horrible as it is, I had an uncle that's actually passed from pancreatic cancer and it's the hardest thing my family's ever gone through. I had an uncle who passed away of angiosarcoma and it's the hardest thing my family's ever gone through. It really is. It's something that I wouldn't wish on anyone, but for these facts that you will see, you'll you'll realize that it happens every single day, several times a day to, to all families. So it really is a shame, but it's how it is at the end of the day. So the World Health Organization report has classified bacon and sausages as carcinogenic to humans. That's crazy. Um, it is pretty crazy, and the place on the website where it's listed is basically somewhere no one would look, which is crazy. They're just required at this point to list that. But yet you see, um, like it, for instance, a Dunkin' Donuts, their commercial, a bacon, egg and cheese sandwich, breakfast sandwich is promoted as delicious and, you know, nutritious from the eggs, from the protein, the calcium that you're getting in this thing is nutritious. So make sure you guys go out and eat it. No, this is when you see bacon, egg and cheese, meat, dairy, and egg in one commercial, that means it's a government funded commercial. These companies are paying the government to put this on. Companies, 
corporations, I should say, like Dunkin' Donuts, like McDonald's, and these huge corporations basically own the government. It is just this huge um, business and political fight that's been going on for years. It's going to continue to go on. And um, yeah, so. You can watch more of how that is expanded when you watch this documentary. Yes. Only five to 10% of cancer is genetic. Think about that. So that means that 90 to 95 percent of cancer can be reversed or prevented by changing your diet and your lifestyle. For women who have had breast cancer, just one serving of whole dairy a day can increase their chance of dying from the disease 49 percent and dying from any other disease 64 wow. percent, which is so crazy because you see the Susan G. Komen Foundation, um, they're the largest and the best funded organization for, for breast, breast cancer, cancer yeah. awareness and prevention you see their pink ribbon on yogurt yeah, dairy yogurt your containers plate. yes I how let me just ask you guys a question how does that make any sense that the foundation that is supposed to be preventing breast cancer and finding a cure is the one foundation that is found on the product that is the leading cause of breast cancer, which is dairy. Um, yeah, 60. I'm just I'm just gonna leave that there 60. for you. <laughs> the number one dietary source of cholesterol in America is. Pause this video. Think about it for a second. What do you think it is? What do you think? Chicken. 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 Not red meat chicken chicken so it's funny because i always whenever i would go to the doctors before um i was always told you know start cutting out red meat in order to become healthier and decrease your uh, high blood pressure and things like that and substitute it with chicken instead my dietitian told me that too yeah like instead of eating red meat eat more chicken with vegetables i'm sure you guys have heard a doctor say eat more chicken um and it's actually the highest source of cholesterol out of any meat so uh, yeah it's actually not the healthiest by any means no meat is so um, I definitely thought that was a useful t tip that I took away from this documentary um, and eating one egg per day is just as bad as smoking five cigarettes per day for life expectancy so that is probably the fact that jumped out the most to me. Basically, smoking five cigarettes per day for your entire life is equivalent to just eating one egg in one day. So that is so in terms so of crazy. life expectancy. Yeah, and all protein is initially made by plants. People assume that you need to eat animals in order to get protein. This is not the truth at all. Animals it is literally not. Not animals eat plants they're the largest animals we have are herbivores yes the bison the largest elephants, the strongest wildebeest the bison um elephants wildebeest um the hippo yes they all eat plants and they're mm. all huge we don't have to eat the animal to get the protein we can just eat the plants at the end of the day so that's a Cut fact out that the middle a lot man. Of, yeah it's a fact eat a lot of plant. people don't know and also this is so disgusting and horrible but i needed to include this um dead hogs are processed into feed and fed to all of the other hogs so that's basically cannibalism for like animals. So you're feeding one species to the so same gross. species. It is so disgusting. And as a human race, I can't believe that this is what we come to and in, in this world to um, believe that money is more important than um, Civility. morals and, morals. you know, a whole species combined. It's just absolutely sickening to me. It's um, disgusting. So... Number four, <laughs> number four documentary that we love and that helped us become vegan is The Best Speech You Will Ever Hear by Gary Yervosky, 2010. So Gary Yervosky is an animal activist. He's responsible, you guys, for turning 8% of the Israeli population vegan. Crazy. That is insane. This speech, without a doubt, is the greatest vegan speech to date. Gary's speech is not only the most comprehensive and convincing, but equal parts captivating, energetic. You guys can hear the passion in his voice. 
he presents the facts very well with logical points that are very hard to argue with and his conviction alone is inspirational. The speech mainly focuses on animal rights, but it also covers many areas of health, environment, physiology, our habits, our culture, and even includes a mouth-watering vegan alternatives to meat. Yes. So, it's so and it's on YouTube. Yeah. Gary Yarovsky mm -hmm. is a huge idol of mine. He is a full-time animal rights activist from Detroit, Michigan. So he goes on tours um, explaining benefits of a plant-based diet and veganism in a peaceful way. And um, he, his main goal is to transform everyone into a vegan lifestyle, which is just unbelievable because anyone that knows knows um, who are vegan now and who are activists know that there is a risk that you take every single day talking about animal agriculture and um, the the horrible effects it has on life forms of all kinds and um some it, of these activists don't even have social media right um like the person that made a documentary we're going to be talking about shortly and you see him in what the hell yeah he is not on any social media he his life is at risk every single day after making netflix documentaries um me and corey are right now currently at risk for making this a video, video on YouTube. The wrong person if it. the wrong person ever saw this video, it just could it could literally be life or death at the end of the day. Yeah, it really there's could. it's a billion dollar industry, so we know that, right? And it's just if you want to create a kinder, more peaceful world, it's just something worth getting educated about. Right. So with um, the best speech you'll ever hear by Gary Yarovsky, um, some describe his speech as a bit extreme because of his graphic description of the treatment of animals and comparisons of slaughterhouses to the Holocaust or genocides that go on today. And as extreme as that might seem, that is exactly what it is. It is um, a large amount of species being exploited and killed. Innocent, innocent beings are being exploited and killed every day. And, um, no one is doing anything about it and it's been going on for years it's going to continue going on for years unless there is a huge change in the amount of people that decide to eat dairy and eggs and wear fur and things like that so it's really important to be passionate about this subject and to speak out about subjects like this and we hope that you take something away from yeah this. like it is it, it is amazing um what you learn when you take the time to listen to someone and you know there's really no reason not to be plant-based with the proper education because yes. th there's no religion that mandates slaughter no. there's no religion that mandates the slaughter of animals okay so that's something that gary says and you guys could go on youtube and watch the the speech to entirety it's amazing yes definitely recommend that you do that number three Documentary on our list is Earthlings, 2005. You guys, Earthlings is this incredible, eye-opening, gut-wrenching, you feel it in your gut, um, about, it's a documentary about the way human beings treat animals, okay, you guys? From food to science to entertainment, we exploit our fellow creatures to no end. It is disturbing and disheartening to see just how brutal humans can be and then to realize that these horrible practices are being done in our everyday life and it is just assumed as the norm. And uh, Earthlings urges us to make the connection. And you guys, that is all I will say about the documentary Earthlings because I have not watched that documentary to entirety. I've watched about half of the documentary and I couldn't even continue you guys. It is so graphic. It is so brutal and I personally can't make the connection between um, human beings being that cruel to another species. Yeah, guys, it is um, probably one of the hardest films you will ever watch in your entire life. Um, but at the same time, it's also one of the most important films that every single person on the planet needs to watch. Um, I forced myself to watch this documentary and as hard as it was to watch and even currently talk about, um, it's not easy for anyone to talk about after they see this documentary. Um, I'm so glad I did because 
it really set in stone the future of my life, which is knowing that I will never go back to not being vegan. I will be vegan for the rest of my life because of this documentary. Once you see this documentary, you cannot unsee this documentary ever. You really cannot. Ever. My friend from New Jersey, one of my best friends, um, she always had a hard time with being plant-based because she just didn't believe that she had the access. She watched Earthlings and she was vegetarian overnight, cold turkey. That doesn't have to be your experience, but that was her experience. She watched it and she was all set. And she's been vegetarian ever since. Yeah. So it's a very powerful documentary to watch. To sum it up, it um, it chronicles the day-to-day -day practices of the largest industries in the world that rely on animals for business and profits. So you see behind the scenes of hidden cameras and um, just footage that that was not known um, to be filmed at these factories and with that you see truthfully what is behind the scenes and no one has ever captured it as well as earthlings so on our number two forks over knives produced by John Corey and directed by Lee Fulkerson 2011 examines the profound claim that most, if not all, of chronic diseases that afflict us can be controlled or even reversed by rejecting animal-based and processed foods. The major storyline traces the personal lives of Dr. T. Colin Campbell, a nutritional biochemist from Cornell University, as well as Dr. Caldwell Esselstein, a former top surgeon at the world-renowned Cleveland Clinic. Now they separately go on these journeys um, with, and they, they find these groundbreaking research and it leads them both to the same conclusion. And the conclusion is that chronic diseases, including heart disease and type two diabetes can almost always be prevented and in many cases reversed by adopting a whole food plant-based diet. The idea of food as medicine is put to the test. The film follows everyday Americans with chronic conditions as they seek to reduce dependence on medications as they learn about a whole food plant-based diet to regain control over their health and their life. Yeah, so obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease, these are all diet-related issues that cost the U.S. $120 billion a year. $120 billion a year, guys, these industries. So crazy. These, these diseases are just so insane, and the health industry makes so much money off of medications. All doctors know nowadays is how medicine, to prescribe, prescribe medicine, medication pills, pills, instead pills, pills. of figuring out the cure. And the reason is because there's more money in medication than there is in a cure, obviously. So one in five American four-year-olds are now considered to be obese. That's crazy. Every minute, one person in the U.S. dies from heart disease. And over 1 million Americans die each year from heart disease and cancer. Imagine if a foreign terrorist came into America and just wiped out a million Americans every year. Yeah. Like, a, a solution would have been dealt with yesterday. Correct. That's a lot of Americans to go down because of dietary reasons. Yeah. So many people don't realize that the average American consumes more than twice the recommended dietary allowance of protein. Most of it from animal products. This promotes faster growth of not only normal cells, but of cancer cells, and has been linked to a variety of cancers as well as heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, and kidney stones. Now, personally, um, my grandfather actually had Alzheimer's and diabetes, and unfortunately recently passed away in the past year. And it was very hard, um, but unfortunately it happens to the majority of Americans. Many people have more than one of those diseases. Correct. It's not just one. A lot of my aunts and uncles have had kidney stones. My uncle had open heart surgery, you know, heart disease. It's just, it's an ongoing issue and heart disease and cancer are the two main diseases yep. and killers of human beings on the planet, um, especially in America. So it's extremely concerning and many people also equate dairy with calcium 
strong bones in the prevention of osteoporosis, which is because of advertisement. So a lot of osteoporosis medication commercials um, are telling you to start drinking more dairy because that gives you stronger bones and will prevent osteoporosis. But the fact is um, that dairy actually increases the risk of fractures related to osteoporosis. Right. So it's the exact thing that is causing the disease that is being recommended, which is another issue and a pattern that you start to see a lot in the food industry, unfortunately. So dairy has been specifically linked with prostate, ovarian, and uterine cancer, mm -hmm. as well as heart disease and early death. Um, humans have no nutritional or medical need to consume the milk of cows or any other non-human species. Cow's milk naturally contains female hormones and also contains antibiotics, pesticides, and saturated fat and cholesterol. So these are things that you don't see in the recipes that me and Corey are making. We're using soy milk, almond milk, coconut milk. Rice milk, any other milk. Yeah, any there's other so milk. many. Oat milk is huge now. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, so mm -hmm. there's so many substitutes where you don't have to sacrifice on taste. Um, and I actually hated the taste of milk growing yeah. up. I try to be like my classmates and have milk with peanut butter, have milk with cookies, Oreo cookies cookies, chocolate chip cookies, and I hated the taste. And in high school, I think it was my mom, she introduced me to soy milk and I was like, whoa, I could be like everyone else. This is amazing. Really? So I have an opposite story of Corey's. So I grew up in a family, and my family actually still does this, where we drink milk with every single meal. Really? So with breakfast, I would have cereal with cow's milk. Um, I would have lunch with a glass of milk, dinner with a glass of milk. I would be yelled at if I didn't have that because um, as my parents are growing up and as I was growing up, we were always taught you need to drink milk with a meal uh, for calcium. And it was just a healthy thing that like you needed. And I actually loved the taste of milk um, because I grew up like this and it wasn't an option for me to not drink it. Um, so my family still drinks milk with every single meal. And um, as like hard it is for me to... Um, like know what I know and see this happening every day. Mm -hmm. I can't live for someone else. I can only uh, recommend solutions and um, you know, like say facts that I know like in this video, but at the end of the day, people are gonna do what they wanna do. And um, it's still very important to make sure that you at least give them the opportunity to know facts that maybe they, they haven't had time to research themselves. So continuing on, the best sources of calcium come from the earth, such as kale, broccoli, bok yeah. choy, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, uh. also plant milks and uh, calcium set tofu are great um, sources of calcium. We that just you could had go tofu. With. <laughs> yeah, we just had tofu scramble. It was so good, mm -hmm. so so good. Watch our tofu scramble video if you haven't yet. <laughs> yeah, Americans eat more meat per person than any other country on the planet. Uh, we're paying the price in doctor bills for sure. You can see that Americans pills, spend pills, pills. so much money on health bills. So much more money on health bills than any other country. It's actually disgusting when you look at the numbers. We're not going to go that deep in this video, but when you look at the numbers, it's astronomical Definitely compared to other. Definitely watch the documentary yeah. if you want to see They get into all facts. of those actual facts. This documentary is so great. That's why we're spending so much time on it in this video. It's definitely, that's why it's number two. It's unbelievable. And so continuing on, so meat usually contains antibiotics, pesticides, and fecal matter. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> and have been associated with salmonella, staph, and other infectious diseases outbreaks and it's just a horrible thing. I've actually had <laughs> salmonella from eating a sandwich at an airport and you guys have almost died. I spent days and days throwing up and doing the other thing and <laughs> I had to go to the hospital because I almost died. I needed an IV. So it was crazy. I can only imagine. It was so bad. And chicken, turkey, fish, and eggs, they contain significant amounts of cholesterol and saturated fat, which the plant-based versions contain 0% cholesterol and far less saturated fat. So you see me and Corey using um, plant-based meats and dairy way, way more in our well, always on our always. channel. Um, <laughs> and plant-based butter. You may see us using some processed things where you can argue and be like, well, this isn't healthy. Yeah. But it's 
no cholesterol. It's not going to give you any diseases. You're not going to get salmonella from any of or these things. Or fecal matter in yeah. our food. No shit in your food. <laughs> Lack For of better, better words. words. <laughs> uh, so, seriously. yeah, it's seriously, like, there's so many reasons why plant-based meats are better. And you just really, at the end of the day, you can't argue it. So, almost all fish contain mercury, which can cause neurologic issues and cognitive problems. Um, many also contain PCBs, a toxin associated with cancer. So guys, eating plant-based proteins can actually prevent or reverse many of the diseases that we see today. So this could be with beans, lentils, tofu, tempeh, nuts, seeds, and whole grains. Animal food production is the world's leading cause of climate change. Some of the healthiest foods are the least expensive, and some of these would be beans, lentils, brown rice, and frozen vegetables. Even when processed foods and animal products are sold cheaply, they are expensive in terms of the cost of your health. Well, wow. So, if you want to find out more, definitely watch our number two. Forks over knives. Forks over knives. So, the moment we've all been waiting for, our number one, drum roll please, Cowspiracy. Cowspiracy is um, from 2014, produced and directed by Kip Anderson. He's you awesome. will remember Kip Anderson from our number five, What the Health. Cowspiracy, The Sustainability Secret is a feature-length environmental documentary following the filmmaker as he uncovers the most destructive industry facing our planet today. And he investigates why the world's leading environmental organizations are too afraid to talk about it. Animal agriculture is the leading cause of deforestation, water consumption, and pollution. It's responsible for more greenhouse gases than the transportation industry and is primary driver of rainforest destruction, species extinction, habitat loss, topsoil erosion, ocean dead zones, and virtually every other environmental ill. Yet it goes on almost entirely unchallenged. As Anderson approaches leaders in the environmental movement, he increasingly uncovers what appears to be an intentional refusal to discuss the issue of animal agriculture. While industry whistleblowers and watchdogs warn him of the risks to his freedom, even his life, if he dares to continue his project. It's shocking. It's a humorous documentary. The documentary reveals the absolutely devastating environmental impact large-scale factory farming has on our planet and offers a path to global sustainability for a growing population. Animal agriculture is responsible for 18% of greenhouse gas emissions, more than the combined exhaust from all transportation. That is so insane to me because we're just told that transferring over to an electric car Get a is going to be the best way to save with pollution and things like that, or solar panels. Shower and together. <laughs> is that really the best way? Now we know absolutely not. Um, It'll so, help, but it's not the best way. Right. And the fact is, the fact of the matter is the most important part of this all is that it's not being advertised at all. Right. Or talked about. It's being refused to be talked about <laughs> at the end of the day. So transportation exhaust is responsible for 13% of greenhouse gas emissions. So there's a 5% difference there. So why not just try to minimize the amount of animal agriculture instead of transportation. So livestock and their byproducts account for 51% of all worldwide greenhouse gas emissions. That's crazy. Crazy. Emissions for agriculture are projected to increase 80% by 2050. <laughs> I'm gonna read that again. Emissions for agriculture are projected to increase by 80% by 2050. So, let me ask you guys a question. Where does that leave our planet? I'm just going to leave that there. Agriculture is responsible for 80 to 90% of U.S. water consumption. 80 to 90%. That's... That means 10% of what? 
of, of something water. else other than animal <laughs> agriculture. That's crazy. Crazy <laughs> for feeding livestock. Why don't we use that land to feed human beings who are starving in third world countries and yeah. things like that? Why, why feed these animals just to kill them in the end? Just so that they can kill us in the end. <laughs> So scientists project fishless oceans due to all of this water consumption and pollution and all of this by 2048. I think that's the fact that breaks my heart the most, to be honest. With overfishing, uh, fishermen, they take in fish that aren't even the targeted fish. Correct. They take in dolphins, they take in sea turtles, they take in all these other animals that aren't even part of the process and they throw them back but by that time it's too late they end up dying anyways. 28 billion animals were killed Not by million. overfishing. Billion. Billion were killed by overfishing just last year in one year. 28 billion Just animals. so you can have tuna sandwiches and salmon with your other options so, of food. So, 2048, fishless oceans if nothing changes. Keep that in mind. Put when the fish that. die, when the fish die, we die. 2,500 gallons of water are needed to produce one pound of beef. One pound. <laughs> For every one pound of fish caught, up to five pounds of unintended marine species are caught and discarded as bykill. As Corey said earlier. Yeah. So you guys, you can find more of these facts in Cowspiracy. It's an amazing film. Kip does it again, wherever he is, because yeah. he has no social media. Yeah. For so, a good reason. For a good reason. <laughs> so livestock covers 45% of the Earth's total land. And two to five acres of this land are used per cow. That's per bigger cow. than my house. Two to five From acres of land per cow. cow. That's, That's insane crazy. to me. Every minute, seven million pounds of excrement, or for lack of better word, shit, <laughs> are produced by animals for food in the U.S. Ugh. Seven million pounds of shit. Every minute. Every minute. Someone's shitting right now. Some cow is just shitting their brains out right now. Yeah. Excre <laughs> excreting shit and methane gas everywhere and we have to breathe that in and the poor friggin' environment has to suffer. Suffer from that. I'm sorry. Animal agriculture is responsible for 91% of Amazon destruction along with that. And this is a huge issue that not a lot of people are talking about, but there are a good amount of people that have heard about this recently. By not eating meat, dairy, and eggs for one month, you could save 33,000 gallons of water, 1,200 pounds of grain, 900 square feet of forest, 600 pounds of CO2, and 30 animals' lives. Wow. And we will put the link in our description of how you can calculate what your veganism or what your plant-based diet, how much that has saved the earth. Yes. And you know, we are we were more than happy to make this video for you guys. It's our we top it. five vegan documentaries that helped us change our lives. Yes, it and changed my life forever. And we hope the same for you. And even if when you guys go out, if you have Netflix, you can watch the, um, you can watch What the Health, Forks Over Knives, um, as well as Cowspiracy on Netflix, and then the best speech you'll ever hear on YouTube, as well as Earthlings on YouTube. Even if you pick and choose which documentaries yeah. you want to watch, and just decide, you know, make more plant-based decisions. What or, is important to you? Or start off with Meatless Mondays. Just started cold turkey. I did too cold turkey. I, I wanted to do 30 days vegan. But guys, you are not expected to just go cold turkey. Don't You don't have to be like that. Yeah, unless you watch these documentaries and the same things happen to you, which is great. But you're not expected to just go vegan overnight. I don't care who tells you that you need to be perfect. Being vegan is not about being perfect yeah, at all. Yeah, we've eaten so many non-vegan things by accident. Yeah, it's not about being perfect. It's about just deliberately not eating something. If you accidentally eat it, that's completely different. But being vegan is being loyal to animals, people, and the planet, and that is what it is. But 
you do not have to do it overnight. You can start you spend by... spend decades eating meat. Yeah. Decades, you know, learning this society and what they've wanted you to know. So Correct. So don't be afraid if it takes you a few years to be vegan. Don't be yeah. afraid. Just make Just better... start by little changes. Yeah. Start by uh, replacing Beyond Burgers with instead of beef or or impossible have, burgers you yeah guys, those are in like certain restaurants the impossible burger is amazing or just change your milk instead of drinking cow milk coconut switch to, milk. to coconut almond milk is pretty good soy milk is pretty good um just those small changes itself you'll feel different in your digestion i know i have friends who when they made the decision to just not eat dairy they're still omnivores but just not to eat dairy they went to the bathroom better just like certain things yeah that will i would help say the really majority of people have already started to cut out dairy in their diet i think a lot of people are figuring out that that's probably to them the least healthiest thing that they could be eating so i've All seen a big change in a lot of the general population who are not vegetarian or vegan are changing their milk so that is a very easy way because you don't have to sacrifice on taste it's 29 there's so many vegan cheeses that are delicious and you'll see more on our video you've seen us use a bunch yes. for our mac and cheese video you guys um i know that for me watching these videos i was like screw taste i don't need this but actually we live in a world where taste doesn't even have to be part of the narrative there are so many options correct so thank you guys so much for watching let us know if you watch any of these documentaries or if you we have love watched to hear them it. leave some facts that you've learned from other sources or these same documentaries or other documentaries below. you think we should watch we're looking Absolutely. for some new ones and any videos if you liked this video give it a thumbs up any videos that you want to see us make in the future similar to this let us know down below and as always we love you guys thank you guys so much for watching and thank you for making it as far as you did if you have made it this far thank yes. you we love you you're loyal and have a great day guys bye, bye.